Welcome to Highbury Congregational Church. Today is our Explore service. As we think about Jesus entering Jerusalem, Today is called Palm Sunday, and hopefully you've all received a palm cross. It reminds us of what happened that day so long ago. As Jesus entered Jerusalem, the people sang a song, and the words of that song come from Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, because he is good and his love is eternal. Let the people of Israel say, his love is eternal. Open to me the gates of the temple. I will go in and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Only the righteous can come in. I praise you, Lord, because you heard me, because you have given me victory. The stone which the builders rejected as worthless turned out to be the most important of all. This was done by the Lord. What a wonderful sight it is. This is the day of the Lord's victory. Let us be happy and celebrate. Save us, Lord. Save us. Give us success, O Lord. May God bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. From the temple of the Lord we bless you. The Lord is God. He has been good to us. With branches in your hands, start the festival and march around the altar. You are my God, and I give you thanks. I will proclaim your greatness. Give thanks to the Lord, because he is good, and his love is eternal. In our Explore service, we're going to be offering the opportunity to go into different zones. There's the busy zone, the listening zone, the color zone, and the quiet zone. Feel free to explore this service in whatever way that feels best. Come, let's worship Jesus, our coming King. We come, generous God, to learn more about your love for us. Help us to join in today in the celebration of Jesus arriving in Jerusalem. We picture ourselves in the crowd, casting our cloaks before Jesus and joining the celebration as he rode into Jerusalem. But would we really do that? Would we really take off our coats and put them on the road for the donkey to walk over? Would we be willing to raise our voices and shout and cheer for Jesus? We confess, Lord, that we might not even leave home, or we might find that we had something else to do. Forgive us for holding back so much from him and help us to celebrate with all that we have. Generous God, you show us what love really is. You did not spare your son, but gave him up for all of us. Help us to seek you with effort and enthusiasm, to give extravagantly, and be enriched by your presence and your love. Show us how to truly be your disciples. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Oh wow. 
Hey guys, why are you out on the roadside? The king is coming. The king? Oh, I love a bit of pageantry. What's the occasion? What do you mean, what's the occasion? The king is coming! Um, which king? The new king. Um, I think. You think? When did we get a new king? We didn't get him, not yet. But everyone says a new king is coming, like the prophets talked about. The prophets? When did you start studying the scripture scrolls? Look, the kings we have now are under the Roman thumb, right? Herod would never fight against Caesar, so if we ever want to be a free country again, we need a new king. A king like David. Someone who can lead us in battle. <laughs> lead you in battle? You get a nosebleed if anyone looks at you in a funny way. Well, not me, but us. Israel, get us back to being a free country again. This is our first chance to see him for ourselves, to see what he looks like. But who's minding the market stall? This is your busy time, isn't it? You could be making some money instead of standing here waiting until who knows when. Well, it's a king, Bob. Our king. The stall can wait. We'll live without one day's cash. What if no one were here, Bob? What would our king think of us? We had to turn up. Look, look, look! He's coming! They're coming now! Oh, oh, excellent. Job done. He's here. You've seen him. Great. Now, let's go. I'm going to throw my cloak on the road to make a way for him. Oh, great idea. Me too. Bob? What? You want me to throw my cloak on the road? My new cloak? <laughs> Do you know what this cost? I'm not throwing that among the dust and camel droppings. Thanks very much. But, but this is amazing. I need to wave something. This needs to be bigger. Look, someone over there has a palm branch. Come and grab a couple from that tree. Uh, hang on. What happened to being eco-friendly? We're tearing down trees now, are we? Hosanna! Praise the Lord! Hosanna! Praise God! Blessed! Is he who comes in the name of the Lord? Praise the Lord! Uh, look, this guy hasn't done anything yet. You don't do a victory parade until after the battle is won. You guys have lost the plot. It doesn't matter if he hasn't done anything yet. We have hope. God hasn't left us. We can either become part of it, join in and give everything we have to it, or sit on the sidelines watching and waiting to see what happens. I want to see what God is doing. I want to be part of it. And, to be honest with you, the view is much better from here. They're going into the city now. Let's go with them. Hmm. Well, I'll leave you to it. See you later, guys. Come on, John. Well, hello and good morning, Highbury. Now, today we're going to learn about... Jesus' entry into Jerusalem, the big city. But before he did that, he sent his disciples to a village nearby to look for a very young donkey or colt, which he was going to ride into the city. Now, as he rode in, the people were so pleased to see him. They broke off branches and they cried, praise him, praise him, praise God. Now, in those days, if you were an important person, you would ride a war horse. But Jesus deliberately chose a donkey, like the one I've got here, because they were the animals that carried all the goods. And they still do that today. So like my little donkey here with his baskets, they would have carried lots of fruit and food and anything else. And so Jesus deliberately chose a donkey because he wanted to show that he was going to be a king of peace, not a king of war and power. So we're going to try and make a donkey. Now, first of all, you can download the template from the computer and then you can cut out, as you can see, around the outline of your donkey. And my donkey, as you can see, has got a cross on his back here to remind us of how Jesus died. Underneath is a palm leaf and it's got some writing on us. And the writing says, the donkey's cross. The mark on my back for all to see is a reminder that Jesus died for me. Well, 
To start with, we're going to cut our donkey out, which I've done already. So here's my donkey. And then I thought, well, I want to decorate my donkey. So there's different things we could do. Now you could choose some felt, if you've got some, or some fabric. And donkeys generally are grey or brown, but you can use any colour that you want. But if you're using fabric, you need to put your donkey on and then pin him on onto the fabric or keep it still. Draw around the edge in a pencil and then you can cut it out and stick it on with some white craft glue. So that's one thing you can do. Another way is obviously to colour it in and I've got a whole lovely box of crayons here and I'm going to, I've chosen a grey but I can use a grey to colour my donkey in. But you could use paint, felt tips, you can choose anything that you've got to colour your donkey in. Now once you've coloured him in you need to think about his eyes. You can colour them in with felt tips but if you've got some Google eyes then you could use those and I put Google eyes on and for that I've used my glue gun which I've got here. But you need to have an adult with you helping you if you use a glue gun because you have to be safe when you use it. But otherwise you can just use white craft glue again. Now, as you can see, my donkey's got legs and I've used pegs for legs. So the pegs that I've got here are called dolly pegs and they're good because they stand. They're made from wood and they stand on their own. Whoops, let's get him up and balanced. Should they do stand? That's it. They stand up. Or you could use this one with a spring and they stand as well. So I wanted to put my dolly pegs on my donkey. So I put it on with, with my glue gun. But you can also use masking tape. So you can get masking tape and peel it off like that. And then stick it around the legs. And that makes it nice and strong. Or sellotape, that would work as well. Then the donkey should stand up and you can mark the hooves on the donkey. Now that just leaves us one little thing, the donkey's cross, the donkey's label that we were going to put on. We've got the cross on the donkey's back, right? So I cut the label out with the donkey's, the special message reminding us about Jesus, how Jesus died. And I thought, right, I'll make a little tie and I'm gonna put it round my donkey's neck. So I'm going to tie it round my donkey like that and turn it round so you can see it. So there, that's our donkey. That was the donkey we began with. And I hope you enjoy having fun making your donkeys. As we've just heard in that story, people were giving extravagantly. They were really excited by the news that Jesus was coming, the new king was coming to their town, Jerusalem. People were throwing down their coats, their cloaks, for Jesus to ride over. They were very valuable in those days. Some people didn't want to donate their coat um, and risk that getting ruined. So they broke off palm branches and lay the leaves down like we roll out a red carpet for, uh, for royalty and special visitors at grand events. So this craft is making a rather simple palm leaf to wave around. Um, this was a really big event, Jesus was coming, so this branch was waved around in the air like a banner. Now we have to imagine that he's coming um, and we're going to write some words on there as well. So I'll just move my special Easter visitors because I think they will get in the way. So sorry bunnies, I'm just going to pop you over there. Okay, so the palm leaf that we're making today is something like that okay there are some different options that you could um you could choose a different shape if you want to here's one that uh, margarita's made and i'll show you how to make that one as well so for this one 
you need, let me just move those out of the way, you need a piece of card or paper. And if you haven't got any green, then you can just colour um, a piece of paper or card in green. Okay, so the next thing you need to do is fold that in half along the length um, because we want a nice long palm leaf. Okay, so it's like a big tall card. The next thing we need, I think I might start off in pen, pencil. Um, we need to use that fold as the centre of the leaf. Okay, so I'm going to draw. Now, palm leaves are quite round, I think. So, stress, oops, there goes my pencil. A kind of curved shape. And a, I'll show you in a minute. Something like that. I'll do it in a fatter pen so you can see properly. Okay, so that's the shape that we're doing. So this is the fold. We go curve around from the top to the edges, all the way down, and then across. And you're just going to leave this little bit in the middle for the stem of the, the leaf. Okay, so the next thing you need to do is just cut out along those lines. And then we're left with that shape for waving. Okay, let's just fold that in again. Now you can at this stage write what you want to write on your on your leaf or your banner. So Hosanna, praise God, Jesus, praise the Lord, whatever you would wave if you were to see Jesus coming. Okay, so the next stage is just to fold that again. And what we're going to do is just cut along, let me draw some of those, cut lines into the leaf. Now, the important thing here is to leave the centre. Okay, so we're going to cut along those. So we need to leave this bit, so do not snip through there else you will chop your leaf in half. So we need to snip along those lines. Okay. Now the more distance between the lines that, or should I say, the less distance between the lines, the more feathery your leaf will be. Okay, so I'm being careful not to cut across there. All the way up. Okay, so I've cut across all of those lines that I've made, and then when you open it up, there we go, nice and feathery. And then you can write your, your words across there. The other design, if you fold the leaf in half, you can just kind of cut triangle triangles out, so they're curved triangles, um, just along. Okay, and that makes a slightly different leaf shape. Depends which one you prefer. So get your palm leaves ready for waving in the air because Jesus is coming. Look, here comes Jesus. Oh, hello. And I think it's I can't see him anymore now.
This is a reflection on how the disciples might have felt after witnessing the events of Palm Sunday. One of the aspects of being with Jesus is you never know quite what's going to happen. Every day is different and that can be both exciting and frightening depending on your point of view. As time moved on Jesus spoke more and more about death, how the Son of Man would be betrayed to the religious leaders who would sentence him to death. We didn't really understand back then what he meant, or if we did, we buried our heads well and truly in the sand. It couldn't possibly happen, not to Jesus, could it? So when he sent us off that day to fetch the colt, little did we realise that it was the beginning of the end, and had we, there was nothing we could have done to stop what was to become the inevitable. The owner of the colt was a bit short with us at first. He came rushing out of his house, his face full of anger. Oi! What are you up to? But when we said the words, the master needs it, his face changed completely and he was more than pleased for us to take the animal. We took it back to Jesus and the others put some of our cloaks on it and help Jesus get on. It couldn't have been very comfortable, although Jesus didn't seem bothered, and we just continued our journey. As we neared the city, people must have known who Jesus was, because some of them spread their cloaks on the road and began to shout, Praise God! Praise him who comes in the name of the Lord! I don't know how Jesus was able to sit there, knowing that in a few days' time, some of those people who were shouting, Praise God! would be shouting, Crucify! Crucify! It's amazing how fickle us humans can be, how we are swayed by the crowd. It was getting quite late by then, and by the time we had reached the turn to the colt, and made our way to find Jesus and the others out at Bethany. It was almost dark and we were ready for supper and our beds. I slept soundly that night, but I wonder how Jesus slept, knowing what the days ahead would bring.
Someone important is coming to town. The crowds gather. Everyone is excited. The President of the United States is coming. And everyone wants to know whether he looks the same in real life as he does when he's on the television. You can hear the chatter and the buzz and the hum. Everyone's getting ready. They want to cheer and to wave. The President of the United States flies in on Air Force One. And the crowds cheer. And everyone's so excited. The Queen is coming. She likes trains. I can imagine her on a red train like this. Toot toot. Lots of food. Lots of lovely drinks. Very comfortable seats. The Queen is coming. But what would you think if someone very important, like a, the President or the Queen, came and arrived in our town using a Zimmer frame, what would we think about them? How would we feel? Jesus was coming to town. He was coming to the city of Jerusalem, can you see? And there was a gate, and he was going to enter through that gate. Jesus was coming as a king. Kings often rode on stallions, especially after they'd won a victory. And everyone would cheer. But Jesus didn't come on a stallion. Jesus was a king, yes, but he arrived on a donkey, a sign of, of peace and humility. And the people waved and they cheered. Some threw their coats into the road Others pulled down leafy branches from the trees and laid them on the road. Jesus didn't come on a plane. Or a train. Jesus came humbly, walking with a Zimmer frame. Well, coming on a donkey wasn't far off. And as he rode into Jerusalem, the people cried, Hosanna, Hosanna, which means save us. Hosanna, son of David, Hosanna, we're so excited to see you. He came and everyone was cheering him. And a week later, everyone was crying out, crucify him, crucify him. And he was nailed to a cross. There are some people who think that when we follow Jesus, that it means we're going to have good health 
we're going to be wealthy, have lots of money, and that because we follow Jesus, good things are going to happen to us. But that's not the way of Jesus at all. Jesus says, if you want to follow me, you need to take up your cross. If you want to follow me, you need to learn my humble ways. Jesus calls us to follow him. I wonder, how is he coming to us this year? I expect he's coming to us in places that aren't expected through people that we might not think uh, are the kind of people who would bring Jesus to us. I wonder if we need to look out for those who are weak, those who maybe we don't think are very important, and open our eyes and our ears and our hearts, because I think maybe, just maybe, this is how Jesus is coming to us. Let us pray. Lord, open the gates of righteousness so that through our prayer we might enter and give thanks. We pray for the nations in the world wanting justice and freedom and thinking especially of Myanmar, Hong Kong and Palestine. We pray for our own nation that we work together through this pandemic, sharing our wealth and scientific knowledge with unity and generosity. We pray for our community here, asking for perception and openness as we become aware of those who are struggling and as we offer to help. We pray for our church Highbury that we love each other and share God's love with kindness and truth. And we pray for ourselves, listening to you, Lord, as we walk alongside Jesus with grace and humility. Lord, open the gates of righteousness that we may follow the King who rides on a donkey into the kingdom of God. Amen.
So as we move into Holy Week, we hope that you can join us for some of the services that we've got planned this week. We're starting on Tuesday at five o'clock, meeting in the car park for What Did Simon See? And then on Monday, Thursday, bring your own bread or a cracker with something to drink for our communion service as we think about how Jesus washed the disciples' feet. And then on Good Friday, we gather together in the car park for the reading of the Passion. Make sure to print out your hymn sheets so that you're able to follow along uh, with the words. Then on Easter Sunday, we're going to sing Thine Be the Glory at 10.45 in the car park, and then we'll move into the church for our Easter communion service. And so now we say the grace together. The grace Grace of our Lord Lord Jesus Christ, Christ, the the love love of God, God, and the fellowship of the Holy Holy Spirit Spirit be with with us all all, evermore. evermore. Amen. Amen.